This program is sponsored in part by Municipal Credit Union, serving the financial needs of our members since 1916. MCU, strong, trusted, growing. Transit Check saves money for commuters, lowers payroll taxes for businesses, and it's also good for the environment. With Transit Check, everyone benefits. The Transit Managerial Benevolent Association, protecting the rights of non-represented, active, and retired managerial employees within the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Mike Landy, President. Con Edison, on it. Working for you 24-7, we're delivering reliable service, energizing your life, empowering your business. We're people helping people every day. Transport Workers Union Local 100, representing the 35,000 men and women who move New York. We're New York's public transit union. John Samuelson, President. And by the Patrolman's Benevolent Association of the City of New York, fighting for the rights of the police officers who protect New York City. Patrick J. Lynch, President. everyone and welcome to another edition of Transit Transit News Magazine. We're here at the New York Transit Museum in downtown Brooklyn where you can step back in time and catch all the trains you've missed. I'm Vivian Guzman. And talk about taking a step back in time. Grand Central Terminal turned 100 years old this year. The MTA and Metro North Railroad, they held a huge celebration. I'm Thalia Perez. And if you missed the big day last month, no need to worry. The celebration will be going on all year. Hey Vivian, we must give a shout out to our new show sponsor, the Transport Workers Union, Local 100. I mean, they do keep the city moving. But first, on this month's show. Follow me on a grand media tour through this grand terminal, telling the story of the building's past, present, and future. I'm Hella Anderson and I've got that story. The New York Transit Museum has thousands of historical items, some dating back more than a hundred years, like this old ticket chopper from 1894. And if you head over to the Annex and Grand Central Terminal, they've got some pretty neat centennial stuff there too. And if you missed the anniversary bash at Grand Central, no worries. Our reporter Mark Rose was there to cover the ceremony. Here's that story. There was much fanfare to celebrate Grand Central Terminal's 100th anniversary. The event was hosted by Liz Cho from Channel 7. A hundred years ago, this place must have seemed like heaven on earth. Glorious soaring space, electric lights, and the promise of an extraordinary future. Throughout the years, Grand Central was not just a destination for travelers, but a place for movies. When Cary Grant bought his ticket out of New York through Booth 15, which is right over there in the classic North by Northwest, Robert De Niro, who strolled through this terminal in Midnight Run. Last year, we had Justin Timberlake and hundreds of flash dancers shaking their booty right in here. And of course, there was the meteor shower in Armageddon, and of course, the Avengers, who completely destroyed the place and still it looks magnificent. And lucky for us New Yorkers, those were just movies and Grand Central still stands today. And it celebrates its 100th birthday with other great achievements. Uh, if you remember 1913, and I may be the only one here old enough to do that, it was a big year in New York City. The famous post office on 8th Avenue was dedicated. Vince Lombardi was born in Brooklyn and this building, which has become one of the most famous and beloved landmarks, opened. Many other dignitaries and guests came to share their stories and memories. Um, Grand Central is everything that New York is. It is so beautiful. But before it became beautiful, much rehab work had to be done. We cleaned the ceiling and we uncovered the spectacular artwork that you see today. We tore down the signs that blocked the light particularly from the east balcony, and we built a new staircase. Uh, we polished the marble, and we got, a, we got Grand Central shining again. The restoration of Grand Central Terminal 
is an emblem of the renaissance of New York City and its vital transportation system. The ceremony was not just people reminiscing about the good old days at Grand Central Terminal. There were also musical performances. Grand Central opened not only as a great train station, but also as a symbolic cornerstone for the city. It heralded to New Yorkers then and now, you have arrived and you have places to go. And what better way to cap off the event than with a birthday cake fashioned after the famous clock. My God, it was so thrilling to perform here. Uh, you know, New York is more than my hometown, it's my heart's town. What did it take to put something like this together? Oh, about 18 months of work with a lot, a lot of people. There's a cast of almost a thousand people, to tell you the truth, with both all the performers and all the production folks that um, go to putting something like this together. It's not only an icon for Metro North Railroad, but it's an icon for MTA, and it's an icon for New Yorkers. It's one of the few old, grandeur built railroad stations in the country and the fact that it's been preserved for the next century to come is fantastic. So what other celebrations do you have planned for the rest of the month? Well, today is obviously the biggest day because it's a hundred years ago. We have a number of exhibits in the Transit Museum. There's a terrific exhibit for the next six weeks and there'll be other events throughout the year that we started to publicize. A parade of trains will be here. It will be terrific to get people into Grand Central to celebrate the whole during the whole year. This magnificent building and this New York City icon has served New York for 100 years and is poised to serve for 100 more. I'm Mark Gross reporting for Transit, Transit News. Here at the New York Transit Museum, you can head down to the train platform and climb aboard at least 19 vintage trains, trains just like this R33S, which was built just for the 1964 World's Fair. And if you make your way over to Vanderbilt Hall, you will see an amazing exhibit about the history of Grand Central. Our reporter, Hella Anderson, will give you a tour of Grand by Design. Using dramatic lighting and oversized images, the New York Transit Museum celebrates Grand Central. We're celebrating the 100th anniversary of Grand Central Terminal and uh, this exhibition is the Transit Museum's sort of, we wanted to create a centerpiece around which the whole celebration could sort of revolve. We decided not to do a chronology. We decided that we wanted to look at different themes about Grand Central that people just may not know about. So people may not know all the interesting things that were taking place in Grand Central over the last 100 years. The exhibition in the Terminal's Vanderbilt Hall is called Grand by Design. It features the museum's historical collection, and it also presents the terminal itself as an artifact. It's a mixture of photographs. We have original architectural drawings of the building, um, artifacts from the building's history, and we also have a future section about the East Side Access Project, which is going on right now, uh, 180 feet below us. And the exhibition really is grand, filling up the space from floor to ceiling. I think that whenever anyone's designing anything in Grand Central, it's pretty difficult because of the 50-foot ceilings that are in the space. And I think the one thing that we wanted to do was to create some large structures and to give a lot of presence for the exhibition. So we've built a number of large aluminum frameworks and uh, made projection a big part of the exhibition. The exhibition is organized around many themes that address the terminal's far-reaching impact on New York City. The exhibition is really split up into nine different sections where people can experience the history, the development up to you know, the current terminal and what's next for the terminal. It tells a lot of different stories. I mean, the, not just the restoration of the building and the, you know, the construction and history, but um, 
Grand Central is a lot of different things to a lot of different people. This is also, besides being a train station, sort of like New York's town square. Grand by Design highlights fascinating aspects of the building that are rarely seen by the public. We just restored a sign from the Grand Central Theater, which was a theater located in here in the terminal, and this hung on the exterior of the building, and you know, practically was in the scrap heap, and uh, so we've restored it for this exhibition, and it's, it's one of several things that we've uh, been able to locate and restore for the exhibition. Interactive, life-size images of employees of Grand Central will answer all of your questions. The exhibit will be up until March 15th. So that somebody in 1913, who suddenly reappeared back in the terminal today, really wouldn't have noticed too much of a difference. There's a lot to see and a lot, a lot of knowledge. I yeah. can't wait to bring my grandson. I've lived in New York all my life and been here many times, and I'm learning more and more as I walk around. I think it's really very extraordinary. <laughs> I love the suitcases there because they're really historical, you know? I, I can see history in that. I can see history in, in this place. Yeah, in, in this place. place. I think it's awesome. Everything is awesome. Yeah. Going from grand in size to a smaller scale with Lego, also on display was a replica of Grand Central Terminal made entirely out of Lego bricks. We had five model builders uh, building this. It took them 90 hours to build it. It's over 2,000 bricks. And this model is going to be part of our mini land, which is actually encompassing 1.5 million bricks. The replica attracted hundreds of admirers of all ages throughout the day. So I'm just trying to take a, a picture of this from memory for my grandchildren. It's fabulous, perfect. It's amazing. I didn't even recognize it was Legos. It looks so real. We've celebrated the past and the future of Grand Central Terminal, big and small. I'm Hella Anderson reporting for Transit Transit News. The museum hosts many events throughout the year, like guest speakers, exhibits on transportation, and fun days for kids. The 100th celebration of Grand Central Terminal also had many fun events. There was singing, dancing, even a postage stamp dedicated to Grand Central Terminal. Our very own Stephanie Legrand was there and she covered it all. There's a party going on here in the main concourse and everybody's here to celebrate. When Grand Central Terminal turned 100 years old last month, thousands of people came out to witness and partake in the historical day. And for its architectural and engineering prowess, the New York City landmark was honored with its very own stamp by the U.S. Postal Service. Through today's commemorative stamp, we salute the story of the dreamers, the architects, the builders, and the patrons of this great monument to America's emerging growth, its optimism, and its prosperity in the 20th century until today. The stamp wasn't just unveiled at the celebration, it was also on sale there. Designed by artist and U.S. stamp illustrator Dan Cosgrove under the direction of Phil Jordan, it captures the beauty of Grand Central Terminal with a look at its main concourse. Thousands of people lined up to get a little piece of Grand Central history. And although the wait was long, many say they didn't mind. I got engaged here about a year and a half ago, and I've always loved this building. It's one of New York's most beautiful buildings. So I want to have a little piece of history and of my personal memories here. And when asked whether the $20 price tag was worth it, one customer said, I think so. Once every hundred years, we can spring for it. The world's largest railway station didn't only receive its very own commemorative stamp, it also received a National Historic Landmark plaque, a National Historical Civil Engineering Landmark plaque, as well as other distinctions, honors that many New Yorkers and non-New Yorkers are proud of. I love Grand Central and I think it's great that they restored it and it's still a part of New York life. And over 200,000 customers every single day Grand Central Terminal is the world's largest railway station. Congratulations, Grand Central Terminal. Happy birthday. You are officially amazing. Some came out specifically for the day's events, while others just happened to be in the right place at the right time. We were just passing by because uh, we just wanted to go to the Museum of Modern Art. 
and uh, we just realized that they're celebrating and handing out free stuff and so on, so we just decided to stick around. I was just passing through and I saw all the excitement and I was trying to figure out what was going on. Sarah Charnas' tribute on the electric violin has opened up the floor to more performances and lots of dancing. a party where more than 75,000 commuters travel daily to and from their destinations can be a little challenging. That's why the New York City Police Department was out in full force to ensure that the day's events went as smoothly as possible. There's a lot going on, a lot of music, a lot of things that they don't used to on their uh, paths, you know, on their, on their trips home and whatnot. So we're very sensitive to that, we understand that, and at the same token, we're happy to be here just like they are. <laughs> To cap off the evening, Grammy Award winning big band Vince Giordano and the Nighthawks performed to everyone's delight. Centennial celebration, not to worry. You don't have to wait another 100 years. Just go to the MTA website at www.mta.info. From Grand Central Terminal, I'm Stephanie LeGrand reporting for Transit Transit News. It takes hundreds of engineers and designers just to keep our transit system moving and to create new train stations just like in Grand Central Terminal. There is a high school in the Bronx that's teaching the next generation of transit professionals. Our reporter Eddie Morrison went back to school to meet these young engineers. Most schools are all about reading, writing and arithmetic, but the Bronx Design and Construction Academy was created to teach skills that will take students to college and beyond. I came from a college prep high school where we would graduate students with a 70, 75, even 80 average and um, they were sent to college and they weren't ready to go to college and they weren't ready to do much else either. So I wanted to start a CTE high school where students would leave with both college and career skills so they could uh, be prepared for any post-secondary pathway of their choosing. A group of transit professionals along with Bronx area teachers and Smalls Electrical Construction had an idea that would revolutionize a Bronx high school. We are partners with the MTA through the TDC, the Transportation Diversity Council. What the MTA really provides is right now mentor and internship experiences. But really what we can do is push in MTA curriculum so that we have real world working experiences for our five CTE strands. Transportation Diversity Council was formed in 2010. And pretty much we were formed to help transport the next generation of transportation and construction professionals. With jobs scarce in many sectors, transportation infrastructure and sustainability continues to add thousands of jobs, and the Bronx High School for Design trains students for those opportunities. Basically, our mission is to integrate 21st century uh, sustainability construction practices with a rigorous academic foundation. Um, ultimately, we would like our students to be powerful agents of change in the community, whether that be uh, going to college or if they choose to go into the apprenticeship and kind of work up the ladder that way. And students are in for more than just a lecture. They're working on real world transportation projects in the context of their carpentry classes, of their electric classes, of their plumbing classes. It's not just in a lab somewhere, it's that they can actually work on real MTA problems and find real solutions that will benefit the MTA in their classes. So it's practical right away. Our program prepares students for entry level positions in the plumbing industry. Many of our students are, will get into the local union or other organizations such as Transit, Metro North, etc. The students who participate in the program understand and appreciate its value. We're basically learning other people what they're learning, um, but we're not paying for it. The difference is we're learning the same exact thing, earlier age, for free. 
So this school is different from other schools because this one, where we have a trade. It's not like we're doing nothing but academic work. We're doing both. And it all relates into one. It all connects to each other. And more importantly, that they are preparing for life. We get to experience a lot of things that other high schools don't get to experience, such as hands-on work. And we're pretty much guaranteed a job when we get out of this school. Many of the school's faculty credit career and technical education for keeping kids in school and helping them to do well in all their classes. We see a huge motivational change in the students um, when they're engaged in their career and technical education classes, whether it be carpentry, electric, plumbing, HVAC, or architectural drafting. Um, they are engaged in those classes because of the real world projects provided by the MTA. Also, we see that once they're engaged in the CTE, we're seeing a higher level of engagement in their liberal arts classes as well. I like everything about the program. It has been teaching me a lot. And I know that later on I'll be doing something more. After their success in the Bronx, the Transportation Diversity Council wants to replicate the program and make it a model for the entire nation. There's a need for bridge inspectors, road repair, subway mechanics, bus mechanics, construction workers and building trades. Every aspect of construction and transportation infrastructure we would like to build on and make sure that we have our place in the industry. It's only been in existence for two years, but the Bronx Design and Construction Academy, along with the Transportation Diversity Council, have built a school designed to benefit students for the rest of their lives. Reporting for Transit Transit News, I'm Eddie Morrison. Stand back from the platform edge and don't become a statistic. 141 people were struck by trains in 2012. 55 were killed. Stand back. Be smart. Be safe. With buses and trains transporting billions of people over 100 years, there must have been thousands of commuters who have met and maybe even fallen in love at their stop. Yes, love may only be one stop away, especially if you were at this year's Missed Connections Valentine's Day party. Our very own Edith Mock, she got this loving assignment, hosted by the New York Transit Museum. This year, the New York Transit Museum hosted their annual Valentine's party at Grand Central Terminal. We are here on Valentine's Day in Vanderbilt Hall in one of the most romantic buildings in New York City, Grand Central Terminal, um, celebrating missed connections. Anonymous Craigslist postings on the missed connections classifieds were the inspiration for this romantic evening. The theme of this, this party, the thing that captures people's imagination is just how amazing those listings are. Um, and how many people read them um, and seek people through them and how funny some of them are and how poetic some of them are and that's the whole point of this, this poetry reading. They've inspired writers, they've inspired artists. Acclaimed illustrator Sophie Blackall was there to share stories of New York's love for her misconnections inspired posters. They were displayed in subway cars throughout 2012. I'm in the subway, I see your drawing, but I cannot get close to it as I am squeezed like a sardine. But even from far between heads and shoulder, hats and scarves, it got my attention. Two days ago, I step into the subway and there it is in front of me. I love it. Your illustration make people smile, connect, think they are a sun's ray for a squeezed sardine in the L train morning. After the storytelling, visitors had the opportunity to get their copies of her book, Miss Connections, Love, Lost and Found, and prints of her poster signed. In about 2009, I discovered Miss Connections on Craigslist. I'd been looking for something in, to illustrate, uh, just for myself, a personal project. Um, and there was something about uh, these narratives, these fragments of stories that completely sucked me in and I began illustrating them because I saw them as pictures, these little moments, encounters that people have of, of love and loss and, and regret and hope all in, in a few words. Poems were read inspired by Miss Connections. What I do is just read hundreds of these things, pick out the best ones, take them verbatim and then break them into lines and stanzas. I don't change a single word just make them into poems. I was wearing a polar bear hat. You were in dark jeans, a white tee, and a sweatshirt. 
Your hair was scruffy, and your smile made my heart skip a beat. This party was inspired by the one that got away. Craigslist has um, um, posted the fact that this party is happening, and we've sort of encouraged people who have posted their own misconnections to arrange to meet here tonight. What better place to meet if they're looking for a misconnection than at the clock in Grand Central Terminal? Well, we've been married for uh, 22 years now, so um, I guess what I what I could say to singles uh, in in w with regard to the misconnection uh, uh, theme is that. Uh, the right connection is never a misconnection, so stay in, stay in there, hang in there, and then you'll, you'll make your connection. I don't have a misconnection, but maybe tomorrow I'll go look and see if there's a misconnection. Hoping to find someone later <laughs> tonight, so. And what do you know? She certainly made the connection at this year's Valentine's Day party for lovers in transit. What's love got to do with it? Well, at this year's Miss Connections party, it was all about love. I'm Edith Mock, reporting for Transit Transit News. The New York Transit Museum is definitely a great place to visit, especially when it's cold outside. There's so much to do and see for the entire family. And another great place to visit is Grand Central Terminal, and you can feel the history. There you can shop, eat, and pick up some annual gifts like these t-shirts and mugs. So come on over to the Transit Museum, and don't forget to say, Happy Birthday, Grand Central! Well, that just about wraps up this month's show. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, email us at transittransitnews at nyct.com. I'm Vivian Guzman. Thanks for watching. And thanks to Transport Workers Union, Local 100, our new show sponsors. And I'm Thalia Perez. Thanks for riding. Hey, Vivian, let's head over to the gift shop and get some new centennial items. This program is sponsored in part by Municipal Credit Union, serving the financial needs of our members since 1916. MCU, strong, trusted, growing. Transit Check, saves money for commuters, lowers payroll taxes for businesses, and it's also good for the environment. With Transit Check, everyone benefits. The Transit Managerial Benevolent Association, protecting the rights of non-represented, active, and retired managerial employees within the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Mike Landy, President. Con Edison, on it. Working for you 24-7, we're delivering reliable service, energizing your life, empowering your business. We're people helping people every day. Transport Workers Union Local 100, representing the 35,000 men and women who move New York. We're New York's public transit union. John Samuelson, President. And by the Patrolman's Benevolent Association of the City of New York, fighting for the rights of the police officers who protect New York City. Patrick J. Lynch, President.